Hey y'all, and welcome back to Coding with Minmer. On today's agenda, we're going to tackle LECO problem 346, moving average from data stream. After that, we'll go over an actual variant of the original question that Meta asks. They have a clever twist that changes the implementation almost entirely. Okay, and now talk, let's read the problem statement. Okay, so we're given a stream of integers as well as a window size. We have to calculate the moving average of all these integers in the sliding window. So how are these parameters given to us exactly? We have to implement a class called moving average where the window size is given to us through a constructor of the class. For our example, just so you know, we'll have a size of three. The stream of integers is given to us one by one every time the next function is invoked. So what we're tasked to do is every time this function is called and say passes in a integer of five, we have to calculate the moving average of the last size values. We observe here that clearly we don't have three elements, we just have the one. That's actually okay. We can still compute the average. There's actually nothing in this problem statement that requires us to have exactly size integers in our window. And if you recall, the average is just the sum of our integers, which so far it's just the five, divided by the number of integers we have, that's one, and we have five. This is what we end up returning. Fantastic, let's go over a few more examples. Let's have the next function be invoked once again, this time with a two. Let's take the average, the sum is just five plus two divided by the two numbers would give us seven divided by two is 3.5. And as you can see, the function signature returns a double. We need to do floating point division. Okay, continuing our example, let's say the function is invoked again and passes in an eight. Finally, we have exactly three elements, size elements in our window. That's great. We can compute the average five plus two plus eight is 15 divided by the three numbers would give us five. Okay, that sounds good and all, but how do we translate this workflow into code? One thing's for sure, we have to preserve all the numbers we have in our class. Each time our function is called, why not push the numbers into a vector? We'll use a vector for now, but we can always change the underlying data structure if we see that a vector is just not fit. Furthermore, after we inserted a number like eight here into our vector, we can simply run a for loop over the last three elements in our window and calculate the average. Sounds easy enough. Let's move on to another function call, and as you'll soon see, there are two problems with this approach. We'll add an integer of 14, sure, and we'll follow our same algorithm. We'll push it to the end of our vector and loop over the last three elements. But here lies problem number one. Do we really wanna iterate size times three times every time our function is called? Remember that our function can be called many, many, many times. So what happens if we have a size of not three, but a thousand, or even a million for that matter? Needless to say, it's very inefficient to have to loop over a million elements each time we add a number. Or even in this case, iterating over the last three, adding a number such as one, and iterating yet again over the last three, repeat with the next number that's added, and looping over the last three, etc., etc., etc. How can we optimize this and avoid looping? Well, each time we insert an integer, why not add it to a window sum variable, like so? The name's self-explanatory, but it represents the sum of our current window. Therefore, when we push the five, we add it to our window to get a window sum of five. Here's the window so far. On the second iteration, we push the two and add it to our window sum. We now get five plus two is seven. Here's the window for that. Then afterwards we pushed an eight, which adding to our window sum, we get a window sum of 15. Here's a reference for that window. Now, when we add the 14, we of course, as per usual, add it to our window to get 29. But hold on, our window now contains four elements. Remember, we only needed the last size elements of three. Therefore, we want to exclude the integer five from our window sum. It's actually pretty simple to do. We can just look back three elements from the end of our vector. So if we minus the five from our window sum, we'll just get 29 minus five is 24. 
And if you want to verify this real quick, indeed 2 plus A plus 14 is the 24. Great, we can now take the average of our window sum of the 24, right? Divided by the last three elements, that's three, to get eight, we return that. Now here lies problem number two. We excluded integer five from our window, our moving window, because we no longer needed it to compute our mathematical averages. If we add, say, a one here, no, we don't need the five, but we additionally don't need the next element, the two. And if we add a five after that, we additionally no longer need the eight. To be redundant, we just need the last three elements. So why then do we need to store these elements in our vector? That's a complete waste of storage space. And in the worst case that our function is called many times, say a thousand times, that's 997 elements we're unnecessarily holding onto. One intuitive solution does come to mind. Why not simply remove the five with the erase function? This is functional, but this operation is a big O of N time complexity. Can we do better? If only there was a data structure that allowed us to pop elements from the front in big O1, but also push elements to the back in big O1 as well. Well, lucky for us, there is. It's called a queue. Let's use that instead of our vector. Let's X that out. This is first in, first out. The first element that we ever inserted in our queue will be the first one out if we call the pop function, thereby removing the five in constant time complexity. With that idea, let's see exactly what we do when we added this 14. We'll first push it into our queue in bigger one and add it to our window sum, which remember got us a 29. Then we'll have an if statement that if our queue's length exceeds our desired window of three elements of size elements, then we know for a fact we want to exclude the leftmost element from our sliding window. What we'll do is that we'll minus the five from our 29 to get back to our 24 and pop it from our queue. The last thing we'll do is compute the average. We take the sum 24 divided by the three to get eight. I already showed this before, but indeed eight is our answer. Let's go through one last example and consolidate this idea. Say we added a three. We'll of course push it into the queue Add it to our window sum. 24 plus 3 is 27. Our data structure length is a length of 4, which is longer than our required window of 3 elements. Thus, we want to remove element 2 from our queue and minus it from our window to get a sum of 25. Because 27 minus 2 is 25. We will pop the 2 accordingly. Turns out, it's very optimal for us to have pre-computed the window sum of 25 for our average calculation. Because of that, we no longer need to loop over our window each and every time we insert a new number. Furthermore, when we divide the window sum by the number of elements in our window, it really is just the size of the queue, right? Because the moment we add another element, say a seven, we'll immediately remove the leftmost element, therefore retaining and adjusting to our desired window size of three. And to note, yes indeed, in the first two iterations we had one and then two elements. That works out because we'll just divide by one and then two elements respectively, or in other words, the size of the queue. But anyway, the average when we inserted three is 25 divided by the three elements. That gives us 8.333 repeating, and we'll return that as the answer. Okay, that's the gist of the algorithm. The time complexity has been optimized to big O1 on every single next function call, and the space complexity is big ON, where N is the number of elements, size elements, that we hold on at any given time. Okay, that was quite the lengthy explanation. Let's write up the code for this. As a quick note, I'll be coding the solution in C++, but you can check out the link in the description for other solutions in Python, for example. Okay, so what are the fields that we use in our class? First and foremost, we used a queue of integers. Let's call it queue. We also had a window sum. Let's initialize it to zero because we obviously haven't pushed any integers yet. Lastly, we'll have a size that we'll set from the constructor like so. Moving on to the next function call, what happens when we add another element? We'll push it into our queue and update our window sum to include that number. Then we ask the question, does the size of our data structure exceed the required window size. If so, we're gonna exclude that number by getting access to it first. 
popping it, and then subtracting it from our window sum. The very last thing we'll do is compute the average, which is the window sum. Don't forget to multiply it by 1.0 because we want a decimal and dividing it by the Q's size. And that's it. Not too bad. Let's now get into the variant. For this variant, we're given a vector of numbers as well as an integer size. We need to compute the average of all the elements in the sliding window of exactly, this is the keyword, exactly size elements. We want to return these computations in a resulting list with integer division. Immediately, we can tell that we're given some of the same parameters as before, but some requirements did change. Let's revisit our example from the original Lico problem and see what is different. Perhaps the biggest difference is the fact that we're no longer given each integer one by one via a function call to slowly build our window. Instead, we're given all the integers up front in a vector named nums. So doesn't this simplify things? Instead of having to wait for a function call to include the very next number in our window, can't we simulate this by iterating left to right and for each number that we're on, include it in our window? Let's go through an example to see how that might work. Let's initialize our for loop. Normally we use an i, but let's call it r this time, r for right pointer. This represents the right boundary of our window. And like before, any number that we're on will include it in our window by adding it to a variable, a window sum variable, very much like before. That's the first thing we'll do, that on any given iteration, we'll add the number to our window sum. We have a sum so far of five. I'll ask this, do we calculate the average right now? No, we don't. While it's true that we did in the original Lico problem, a new requirement here is that we wanted exactly size elements. We clearly just have the one, so we don't do anything. We simply move on to the next iteration, expanding our window and including the two. We add that to the window sum, two plus five is seven. We still don't have three elements yet, so we don't compute the average. On the next iteration, however, we include the eight, and finally, we have the three elements in our window of size three. We have one, two, three elements. We realize that when we included the third element, this eight here, then this window and any window afterwards, such as this one, and lastly, this one, will have enough elements, specifically three elements. Put another way, in this example, whenever our right pointer is at index two or greater, then it would be illegible to calculate the average. But why is it two, not three, for the third element? Well, remember that vectors are zero index. They start at zero, not one. It's an annoying off by one. You'll see in the code that we figure this out by minusing one from our size to get index two. But great, let's do the per usual and add the eight to our window sum to now get 15. What is the average? We take the 15, divide it by three, and we know it's three because we always want exactly size elements. The output is five. But something else that's different here is the return type. We want a list of these outputs. So instead, let's push it to a vector and call it something like this, result, and add the five that we calculated. Let's move on to the next iteration. We increment r. So our window now stretches all the way to index three for four elements. We'll add 14 to our window sum, but hold on for one second. Recall we wanted exactly size elements, three elements, in our window. Since we have four, we'd like to ideally remove integer five. How do we do this in code? We obviously cannot pop it since we don't have a queue like we did before, but we can still exclude it from our window sum. Why not simply look back a full window size and see if there's any element to the left of our moving window. Or in other words, look back size elements, three elements from where we are, the right pointer. That math is quite simple. It's just r minus the size, which is three minus three is zero. And at index zero, we look at that, we have an element there, it's five. And that's exactly what we wanted to exclude. More formally, if the resulting index is zero or greater, then we want to exclude the element there by minusing it from our window sum. We'd no longer like to consider it in our mathematical calculations. With all that said, let's go through our usual routine on any given iteration. 
We'll include the 14 in our window sum. First of all, that gets us 15 plus 14 is 29. And exclude the 5 and minus it from our window sum. That gets us back down to 24. And you can verify that if you want, 2 plus a plus 14 is indeed the 24. And as always, the last thing we'll do is check if we can take the average. Well, we're past index 2, we're at index 3. So surely we have size elements in our window. What's 24 divided by the 3? That's 8. Let's push it into our vector. That's pretty much all the logic we have to take care of, but let's move on to the last iteration and put it all together. We increment r to index 4. We include the 3 in our window to now get a sum of 27. Next, we ask ourselves, do we have to exclude an element from our window? Yes, we do. We only want the last three, so we want to exclude the two. We look back three elements from where we are at index four to arrive at index one. Fantastic, that points at the exact element we want to exclude. So if we exclude that, then our window sum drops from 27 to 25. And just so you know, that output index that we computed at index one really acts as our left pointer. It lags behind where we are by one, two, three elements, the full window size. Finally, after that, we ask one final question. Can we take the average? Indeed, we have size elements in our window. Index four is greater than size minus one, which if you remember is right here. Let's take the average 25 divided by three is 8.33. But the last requirement change is that we want to perform integer division here and truncate our answer. There's no mention of decimals anywhere in the variant. Therefore, we can truncate this and add the 8 to our result. And with that, we have the resulting vector to return. The time complexity is big O n, and the space complexity is big O 1. If you don't count the auxiliary space, that holds our answer. Amazing, let's get to the code now. All right, the first order of business, let's initialize our resulting vector. We called it result. And yes, it holds integers because remember in the variant, we do integer division. Let's make sure we return the result too before I forget. Another variable we'll need is the window sum, which is the sum of all elements in our current moving window. After that, we're ready to loop over each and every one of our numbers. And for each number, we'll do three things. Number one, we'll include the number in our window by adding it to our window sum. Then number two, we ask ourselves, do we need to exclude an element that is no longer in our window? Remember that was just right minus size. And really this acts as the left pointer. Let's write that as syntactic sugar. And if this is the case, if the left pointer is at index zero or greater, then we'll remove the value at this index from our window sum. Lastly, we compute the average if and only if our right pointer is equal or greater to our size minus one. Or in other words, when we've reached the sized number, or in the previous example, the third element. If this is the case, we're just gonna push back the average, which is the pre-computed window sum, divided by our given size. And once that's said and done, that is the entirety of the code. I hope that made sense. And if you learned something today, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.